Hey everyone, good evening and welcome to the Brasserie Style cooking class. I am Charlotte Samuel and joining me, my co-host, friend, moderator, Scott Tompkins. You know, it's good to be here, Chef, and I gotta say, we have done this, uh, we do this week after week. Week after week. we're always live, and I can honestly say that I'm always excited to see, number one, the number of people who are tuning in to watch these virtual cooking classes, which is fantastic, yeah. and the new platforms on Facebook yes. that you can shop now. So as you're, as you're yes. watching, as you're doing this class, we can actually, somebody watching on Facebook can actually click on the link. Click. It'll take them somewhere, and they can shop and buy it, and go home and make what you're gonna make. Yes. So what are we gonna Fill make tonight? Fill that cart. Fill that cart. Um, so we are doing a brasserie style cooking class. And what does brasserie mean? So brasserie is um, the French word for brewery, but how does that pertain to cooking and cuisine? So a brasserie or a French brasserie is, tip is, is really an informal, um, casual restaurant, right? With very simple menu items and a very simple beverage offering. Typically what you would find on a brasserie style menu would be um, like a roasted chicken, some oysters, right? And um, most popular would be a steak frites, right? So some like beautifully cooked steak with some homemade uh, crispy golden brown french fries. Um, so that's what we're gonna make today. We're gonna make a pan seared New York strip. We're gonna make some palm frites, some homemade french fries. And then we are going to make a delicious compound butter. All right, Tom Kids, I'm gonna let you go ahead and say the name of this because I'm gonna butcher it and I'd rather I'm hang very you excited out to, dry. to say it in my <laughs> most excellent French accent. I get Matra di Hotel Butter. Yes, that Something is it. Like that. You sound like the. Um, don't say Pepe Le Pew. Don't say Pepe Le Pew. Just kidding. Okay. That was from the Muppets. Anyway, Either way, so, I'm fine with that. Uh, basically, a compound butter is a wonderful softened butter, um, room temperature temperature butter where we throw all of these beautiful herbs into it. We roll it up into a log, then slice it and throw it on top of a steak and it creates like a fake sauce. Like it's essentially a, a sauce hack, right? A so rich sauce. Yep. All those um, beautiful flavors from the from the butter sort of melt into the steak and they mix with like the natural juices and it becomes this, you know, faux sauce. So it's a sauce actually wonderful and it's very 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 easy to do so in front of me I'm gonna get right into it right so um, in front of me I have um, four steaks they're all the same cut these are um, all prime one New York strips um, the steaks over here on this side these are gonna be two inch thick steaks right big. so that's these are these are big guys and these are gonna be that more traditional one and a quarter one and a half inch New York strip right when I was at the meat market counter this morning, um, the, the butcher was putting them into the case, and I was like, how Texas is this? <laughs> like, like how, how Texas is this? And I thought that it would be really fun to show you guys how, um, you know, just sort of make it a little more fun. So do something sort of like this. Um, we are still gonna pan sear the steak, but if you are gonna do anything that's thicker than one and a quarter, one and a half inch, um, thick, you're going to want to finish this guy in the oven, right? So I've preheated my oven to 350, um, 350, 400, depending on, you know, time. Um, raise your hand if you want to see me cook this one. Yep, all the yep. hands are raised. Okay, all the hands all are hands raised. raised. So that, uh, there's hey, our answer. Real quick, too, yes. a great shout out to our meat market. Yes. The, um, those are, you said earlier, those are prime one steaks. Yep. Uh, we are doing a brasserie style cooking class, steak frites. So yes. obviously, if you go to the meat market and you don't yes. see this particular cut, always ask. One of our HB Meat Market partners will be happy to find you the particular cut. Or if New York Strip is not your thing and you want to go, I want that big ribeye, but yeah. can I get it cut the same length? Absolutely, just go ask them. They're phenomenal. They are wizards and magicians, yes. and they can make anything happen for you. Pretty much anything. I don't want to say anything. Almost anything. So I went right into it. I just started seasoning this guy. Um, salt and pepper, and I'm using fresh cracked pepper right here. Just a quick note, these steaks, both cuts, have come up to room temperature. It's really important, um, especially if you are going to cook this thicker, this like two inch thick guy, that you allow these steaks to come up to room temperature. And the reason why is that um, we're gonna put these, you know, when you put a cold piece of meat into a hot pan, what happens is the outside of that, um, of that piece of meat, that steak, is going to cook, right? While the inside is still gonna maintain, like it's still gonna be cold, so it's cold. gonna take longer for it to, to come up to temperature or that desired doneness. So really what's gonna happen is the outside is gonna have this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful caramelized brown like crust on the outside and the inside's still gonna be cold. So room temperature um, really kind of 
smooths out that process and also cuts down on some cooking time. So again, salt and pepper, that's it. I've got my cast iron skillet over here and this guy is smoking hot. This is um, like medium high heat. Can y'all see that smoke coming off this thing? Yeah, this you, thing let it, you let it just sit dry pan, super, let, it get, let it get nice and hot. Super hot. I'm not adding any oil to this. What I'm gonna do really quickly is Look at this. I'm going to flip this guy over. Uh, I'm going to season both sides real quick. I'm going to season both sides. Look at these guys. All right, I just want y'all to know that this is about like, honestly, I'm going to say about 20 ounces each-ish. These guys so are pretty so big. Half, so it's yeah. a half portion, basically? Yeah. Half yeah. portion? This is what we, what we did the math on it, about like about three pounds of steak right here. All right, more pepper, a little more salt. I'm using kosher salt. I like kosher salt. Yeah, it's clean. These are so beautiful. Liberal um, amounts. Right. Now you can obviously season this with whatever you wanted, but yes, kosher yes, salt yes, and yes. pepper, very classic. Let whatever the meat you speak like. For itself. Whatever you like. I I really salt and pepper. It's very classic. We're gonna let the flavors of um, the like the the quality of the meat come through, and we're also gonna put that compound butter on it. All right. So what I'm gonna do first. Are you gonna render out a little? Fat I'm gonna chef? render out some of this fat from that fat cap. And we're going to sear it a little bit. So yeah, because you have such a thick cut of meat, you've got that little slab of fat on each right? side. Right, I'm going to get rid of these. It, which is going to act as your oil instead of actually adding oil to the pan. Now you might want to adjust your temperature a little bit. And like I said, medium, medium high. Y'all. Yeah, you get a little of that rendered tallow. Yes. <laughs> Ah, so beautiful. And those are primes. They have a little more fat yes, on them in general, a little so you more really fat. don't need a ton of oil. So I have to tell you all a quick story. So I have this friend from France, right? And this was way, way before I went to culinary school. It was like, you know, I don't know, early 20s. It doesn't matter how old I was, right? And we, he was going to cook dinner. So he's, he's making dinner, and we got a steak, and he was going to cook it on the pan. And I'm like, I'm, I'm from Texas, right? And I was like, <gasps> What are, you, what are you doing to that steak? I had no idea it was a thing. Anyway, I let him do it. It turned out beautifully. I was a believer then. All right, look, see what we did? We rendered out some of that fat. We made a beautiful caramelization on that, seared that. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. And we're gonna do, honestly, six to seven minutes on this side. And then we're gonna flip it over. And when we flip it over, we're gonna put this guy in the oven and let it finish in the oven. Their steaks are gonna cook, uh, they're gonna be done before, you know, before we're done with the fries probably, but I wanna let them rest for 10 minutes, so that's really important to get some carryover cooking. So Tompkins, give me a timer. I got a timer got set a timer? already, Chef, as okay. soon as you flipped them, six minutes and counting. And I'm looking for something and I can't find it. Stand Tongs, bowl, potatoes, I'm mustard. I'm looking for my water for my potatoes and I found it. I put it right here. All right, so now we're going to talk about fries, palm frites, right? My desert island, my last food, the only food, if you were to say, what is, if you could only eat one food every day for the rest of your life, what would it be? And I would tell you French fries. French fries, all right. French fries. French fries are my love language. If you were, if I was mad at you and you bring me French fries, no longer mad at you. Um, I love them so much. They're perfect. It's the perfect food. It's the per it's perfect food. I love them. So um, to make delicious French fries at home, we're going to do a process where we're going to blanch the potatoes first. And we're not going to blanch them in water. We're going to blanch them in oil first. So we're going to do a double fry double fried fries, right? And that whole process allows um, the potato to get super crispy, right? Um, the whole name of this game in this palm frite game is low moisture, low starch, right? So um, we are using a rusted potato, which is you know a wonderful, wonderful potato. Um, I'm gonna keep the skin on this guy. I'm gonna show you guys how to cut it really quickly. Um, Tompkins, if you could only have one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Um, is our, since we're make believe, can it can the food that I pick be nutritionally dense? It's, just, it's, it's whatever you want. All right, it's so like, let's say either Kit Kats or Rolos, maybe something Kit in Kats that vein. Or Rolos, huh? And if I can't survive off that, uh, maybe a a lifetime supply of Neapolitan pizza dough, and I'll just make pizza out of the seawater. <laughs> there you go, perfect. You heard it here first. Pizza and dough. cook it on a fire. I'm okay. assuming I'll have that those utensils as well to make you know some kind of flat thing, stone to cook okay. on. Okay. 
<laughs> so I'm going to give you all his address, and you all can just send him Kit Kats and Rolos, because I love that. All right, so the potato. So the potato is round, and what I want to do first when I'm cutting this guy is I want to give myself sort of like some security, some safety, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut off one of, the, um, one of the edges and sort of square them off, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move this out of the way so you all can see Chef, that. Chef, I'll take my that? shoestring. Can you, can you accommodate course, a little yes. special order for yes. shoestring? We're going to do a little a more of a rustic frite. All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing. You can peel these guys if you want. I prefer some of that skin on the potato. Um, also, it's, it's less work for me. And also, that means there's more potato to cut into fries, to fry in the oil, to put into my mouth. All right. Chef, so, you got one more special request. Yes. I'll want mine shoestring. Courtney wants hers waffles. So okay, good luck so a that's waffle. a different show when we talk about how to do the mandolin. But yes, that can that can be a thing. Um, and waffle fries are delicious. All right, so we've created sort of a sort of a rectangle, right? We've squared off our potato. Now all we're going to do at this point is we're just going to cut this rectangle in half, right? So we have two pieces. Then. What we're going to do is we're going to cut each one of these halves into half again to create quarters, right? So then we have these planks, right? I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So you're not going wedges. You're just going nope. more thicker kind nope, of steak just a fries. thicker, just a thicker cut. And then what we're going to do, now we have this potato just like this. We're going to go ahead and cut this guy into half again. And then one more time. And then we get some potatoes. Now, depending on the size of your potato, your potato, you know, your fries will be a little bit yeah, smaller, if you get those thinner. Texas taters, but you know what? Those are be like big nature didn't make these guys perfectly, perfectly square. So it's okay if your potatoes aren't, you know, perfect. I'm gonna cut this little guy off real quick. I don't want to eat that. And then the same thing again. All right. So. Like that. Oh my god, that steak smells so good. It does. All right. uh, your timer chef has a minute and 40 on it. A minute 40. So look at that. So we've got some really good shaped potatoes. Fairly simple, right? And really all you need is four potatoes. They come in a package. Oh, that's the two potatoes. Those are giant. Let me show the you what I got. giant ones. This guy right here. This is what I use. Just a Lone Star. Great potato. Right. Perfect size. Perfect shape. And I'm going to put them in some cold water, right? So after this, what I'm going to do is I'm continue to cut my potatoes. I'm going to leave them in this water, and I'm going to put them in the refrigerator for a minimum of one hour. And there's two things that the water, the purpose that the water um, serves. One is it prevents the potato from oxidizing, meaning that it prevents the potato from turning that funky brown color. And the other thing is that as the potato sits in the water, right, it leaches out or washes off some of that starch that's on the outside or maybe, you know, like the shallow um, of the potato, which is going to help, A, give us a crispier potato and also keep the potatoes from becoming like sticky and gummy, right? So... Which is really, if, really important, yeah, because um, like you talked about, like with all potatoes, yes. so like in french fries, you want to wash as much of the starch off as you can to get a really clean fry so you don't get all that browning because the starch on right? there. But if you're making like a potato gratin, you want to save the starch because that's what's going to help thicken up your gratin. So there's like different applications for every everything but yes clean right? clean so, fries you can keep this um, you can keep this these potatoes in water for like up to 72 to 72 hours but i highly recommend you change the water out a couple of times um, incidentally this works really well for like um, you know p apples or pears um, and i've even Potato seen people too. like yeah keep like um, avocados from oxidizing in water i saw that on the TikTok timer chef All right um, my timer went off perfect timer went off. Um, I also want you to notice, I don't know if you can see it, but you can, can you see that cloud down there at the bottom? Oh, yeah. All right, that's the starch that's coming away, right? That's coming away from those potatoes. It's washing those potatoes yep, clean. Right? All right, so I've got these potatoes over here. I'm going to come over here to my oil. In my Dutch oven right here, I have some peanut oil for frying. Now, why um, peanut oil, chef? So I like peanut. I like the flavor of peanut oil. It has a very high smoke point, so like 430, 450. Um, notice I've also got my thermometer here. I ha it's thermometers are okay. Timers are okay. Thermometers are okay. Um, lots of people feel like they need to like cook from feel, but I like to. I like some assurances. I like you know take some risk out of it. Yeah, I mean there's, um, there's so much more home chef right? people becoming from home cooks to home chefs, and so it's good to outfit yourself with the tools to be able to make things. Yeah that you want without having to take, take the sure. guesswork out of it and just make it easier sure. on yourself. So I filled this up, I've 
maybe two, two and a half inches um, of oil. So like depending on the pan that you're using, right? Um, about two inches. You're gonna wanna give yourself like a lot of room, right? From the, the surface of the oil to the top of the pan because we are putting some, we're putting potatoes in there and you wanna account for the, um, the displacement of like when you put the potato in, right? So the space, that. And then also as these cook, the moisture's gonna come out of that potato and they're gonna bubble up a little bit, right? And you wanna make sure you don't have anything overflow. Um, just, you know, to be safe, right? I'm gonna let these go. Can you give me like two minutes on that? I'm gonna two give more minutes? Two okay. minutes, okay. On top of so, the other two minutes, got it. For our, fir our first cook, right, so to blanch our potatoes, um, we want to be anywhere between 350 and 375. If your potatoes have been in the refrigerator all day, um, if they're really cold, 375. Because as you put the potatoes in, the temperature's gonna drop. Um, we're not trying to totally brown our potatoes. We just want to get a little bit of um, light color. We want to start that cooking process. So I'm gonna grab our potatoes out of the, the refrigerator. In incidentally, if you find yourself in a situation where you do have a candy thermometer or a fry thermometer and you're getting your oil and your oil goes over temp, yeah. don't freak out if it gets to 400. You can either just turn the heat off or yep. just what is an easier way to get the oil temperature down is to add more just cold oil, just regular room temperature oil. It'll kind of help taper that down and bring the uh, temp down on the oil a little bit for safer frying. Okay, so what I'm doing right here, so y'all can see, is I've got some towels and I'm I'm... I'm going to dry my potatoes off, right? And I'm going to dry them off really, really, really well. And you can see I got all different shapes and sizes. It's like Lucky Charms over here. They're snowflakes. They're snowflakes. No two alike. Right? And I'm going to rinse, I'm going to dry these guys off really, really well. Water's so cold. So Water dry them and off oil again. don't mix. And if you were to put, if these were too wet, you could run the risk of boiling over, bubbling over, starting a fire, hurting yourself. So safety first. And also, again, this is about a moisture gain. We don't want any, we don't want any moisture. All right. I mean, I'm really drying these guys. They look good. You're giving the right attention to them because I plan on eating at least 62 yes. of them. Also, I really don't want to start a fire while we're live. That would be terrifying and embarrassing. <laughs> also, that can be fun. It gets a little excitement in the kitchen. You know, I mean, I've always wanted fire, to always. see how the Ansel system works. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to flip our steaks. I feel I kid, it. I feel I it. Kid. I feel it. All right. You got, there was like five seconds left, so you're about the time. What? Maillard reaction. This is why you pan sear a steak. So on a grill, most people think like steak on a grill is great. You get those great grill marks, but in a pan like this, you get that caramelization over the entire surface, not just in a crisscross pattern. Okay, this is so great. I'm gonna throw these in the oven. Stand by, stand by. All right. You wanna I gotta get timer? some towels. I know I've looked ill prepared, but I've got this. Did you do you see how beautiful this looks? Oh, it's gonna be so a great good. steak. Okay, throw these in the oven, Tompkins. I'm ready, chef. What it's like time? How five much pounds time? of steak. The cast iron weighs ten pounds. Um, set me up with a timer for like eight minutes, eight to ten minutes. All right. Okay. I've dried off these potatoes. It's gonna give us enough time to do all of these wonderful things. Eight minutes set. Thanks, chef. All right. So if you are just okay. joining us, don't forget if you're watching on Facebook, you can always. Uh, Anything that you see, you can click on those. It'll take you right to a website where you can shop those and buy them, right. take them home. You can do exactly what Charlotte is doing. We're doing a French brasserie class. We've done the steaks. We've got New York strips, about a two inch thick cut of beef. It's been seared in its own fat, thrown in the oven, salt and pepper, finishing it out. Now we're about to fry some French fries. Yep. She's dried off the palm fried. So, and our oil is hot. So we're about, we're about, I turned it up a little bit. So we are, we're kind of high. So we're about 375. I'm gonna slowly, Add my potatoes in. And so do you see all that bubbling? All that, all, like all that, it's almost like they're hissing and they're bubbling. What that is, that is the, the moisture and the steam inside the potato coming out, right? And it's causing all these bubbles. And as we cook these, okay, our oil's dropping. Ooh, can y'all hear that? It's such a satisfying sound, that like frying noise. 
All right, let me get some tongs. Oh, so they're getting a little bit dark, and that's okay. It's because my oil's a little bit hot. That's all right. I'm not mad about it. They'll still, they'll still cook. These french fries will still eat. And remember, we're going to do a double fry, right? So you can see how they're getting some color, and it's a little bit more than I wanted, but that's, it's not a big deal. Not a big deal. So if that happens to you, not a big deal. So the blanching technique, for those that are, like, as you're watching this, like, is to give it the potato a little, a simple cook first to yes. kind of get it soft. Do you want that interior nice and soft? Because if you just were to take this now and fry it for 15 minutes, you'd have that kind of darkness. You'd have, like, maybe you'd have a really crispy outside. The center would still be a little still bit hard. It'll still be hard, right? And it'll still be a little bit gummy. So what we're doing is we're allowing the inside of the potato to steam, right? All of that moisture to come out. We're getting that light fluffiness on the inside. But we're also making, um, creating a, like a, a layer on the outside, right? Correct. All right. All right, I mean, I'm pretty go. close to being okay, a French fry so guy if it was a desert island food. Like, I'm pretty, pretty close, but still, like, I'm more of a sweet tooth guy. So you are, so where... well, I'm a... And, like, ketchup? Oh. Yeah, ketchup. I'll ketchup all day, just as long as it's not mayonnaise on the French fries. When I, so when I was in um, Amsterdam, there was this long line of people, and everybody was walking away with these giant cones. And I was like, what are they doing? What is that? I want to know. So um, I noticed that everybody was eating, like, like fries, frites, and these giant cones. They're eating these little, like, darling little wooden picks, right? And I waited in line because I was like, if this is what everybody's eating, then I want to eat this too. And also remember, French fries are my love language. So I get to the, I get up to the counter, and it's my turn to order, and I didn't know what to order. And I said, well, I just want to know what, what's the most popular. What is everybody else getting? And the guy said, well, it's ketchup, mayonnaise, and white onion. And I was like, sign me up. So I got all the ketchup, all the mayo, and all the white onions, and I sat there on the curb, like right there in front of that stand, and ate the entire thing, like licked my fingers clean. Oh. I'm, I was in, yeah, I'm, I'm in on everything except the mayo. I don't want the mayo. I don't want uh, Russian you know what, dressing though, on like, my fries. It was the ketchup nope. and the mayo with the white onion, and it was sort of like, you know, like Russian dressing or like whatever you dip in a Reuben. Oh, it was so good. Look, you put mayo with my fry, chef, and you've made a powerful enemy okay. today. Okay, all right. Well, I'll take anything else. I'll take ranch. I'll take. Okay. You can All right. Drag them in bacon grease. You can do whatever else you want. I just don't want the. So I'm just gonna keep going with this. I'm just gonna. Let me see. Let's. Courtney says out. fries and choco ice cream. Nom nom. I mean, like there's like. The do old you dip? And fries. She dips her her French fries in her frosty, and I support that. All right, so I want to show you this potato. Y'all don't do this at home, but we're starting to get some bubbling on the outside, right? So it's starting to cook on the inside, which is exactly what we're looking for. Our oils dropped to a good temperature. I'm gonna give it a little bit more. I got too excited about the steak and forgot, and you know, let my oil get too hot. No big deal though, it's gonna be okay. It's okay, hey, this is a scratch. This is this all is about it. doing it from scratch. You can right. always go, you know, if you walk in NHB, go to our frozen section, you can see about a, a myriad of, I love the word myriad, I don't know why I use it in fries, but you can find, <laughs> a literal plethora of different options of, uh, you know, they got your waffle fries, they got your curly fries, they got tater all that tots. stuff. Tater tots. Tater exactly. tots. Exactly. But this is all about like, hey, that's easy to do. This is like, hey, it's easy to take a potato and just with the proper skills, techniques, turn it into fantastic French fries from scratch. Yes. Oh my gosh, we're going to fry all the fries. So what I want to do with these fries on a different show is take okay. these same fries and make poutine with them because we sell those cheese, that we sell the cheddar curds in most delis. Oh yeah. slather them with gravy. Claire, I'm with you on the ranch dressing, girl. That's, that's California all day long. French fries, the ranch, ranch? dressing. ranch? Yep. Okay. I'm not typically a ranch guy, but the french fries, all day. I'm a ketchup. All right, I'm going to start taking some Just of these classic. out. Just classic, you know, that's a classic. Ketchup's very classic. Somebody said K uh, curry mayo, which I said curry mayo all day long. That's is a this thing. Long? Curry mayo is a big thing. It was a big thing I in Amsterdam. That. Yes. I'll dip my fries in that. I just don't want plain mayo. Plain mayo is a no-no. No, but it was mixed with the ketchup and the white onion. I was skeptical at first, but I did it. Maybe. When in Rome, you know? Still not on board. You haven't sold me yet. All right. So we're taking these guys out. We're going to put them on the parchment paper. I'm going to get some of the darker ones out first. Chef, how long are you going to cook your steak in the oven? There's a question. So we're going to do about eight minutes. Okay. Right? We have and one minute and 56 it. seconds left. How many? A one minute and 53 seconds. Is it me or is his timer like really fast? But it's second. Yeah, this, they're counting down now. It's okay. at 149. So it just keeps going. Okay. You want me to give you a countdown? Starting now. Go. 
140. We want to do it in accent or just plain? How do you want no, to do this? No, you're it's, good. It's your just show, like that. Just like that. <laughs> All right. Take one these guys 30, out. one left. All right. I'm going to keep going. Do y'all want to sit here and watch me make some more fries? Because I'm, I'm, the more fries I make, the more fries we you eat. You know what I'm excited about as you're making those fries is, what are we drinking with my yes. fries? Okay. With the thing. I need an appetizer to start off with. I do. I have something for you. We still got to make our butter. All right. So um, just note to self, you can, fry in, you can fry in any oil, right? You're using peanut oil. If you have an yep. allergy to peanut oil, don't fry in that. Fry in canola oil or grapeseed oil. That's right. If you are allergic to peanut oil, you don't have to. You can always use um, canola. Not going to make much of a difference. All right. So I've blanched these guys, and they're starting to bubble. They're starting to cook. Like you can see this guy, right? It's starting to kind of crunchy. They're getting a little soft, right? Now we're gonna take these guys and we're gonna stop the cooking process. We're gonna put them in the fridge, right? Back in the fridge. So they'll still steam. You can even put like them in the freezer and we're gonna stop this cooking process. Right, and I've got some right over here that I already made, but I'm gonna take those out in a minute. But right now I wanna show you guys how to make our compound butter. I'm gonna keep our oil on low right now because I don't want it to get too hot while I make the butter. So you're going to finish the fries. They're already yep. blanched. They're already blanched. We're going to let them completely cool off, right? You could even put them in your freezer if you want. Um, and the carryover cooking is going to steam them, right, Chef? Yep. They're kind of in there. It'll help steam, which will help finish steam cooking. Steam that inside, do a clean up, and we're going to get ready for this butter, all right? Go ahead and say, how do you say it again, Tompkins? There you go. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, it's I love it. It's my best French. I've never lived in France, but I just feel like that's how... All right, so for our butter, very simple. I've got one stick cubed of room your, temperature your salted your steak, butter. Let's see. All right, you know what I do right now, guys? We're gonna temp it, all right? We're gonna temp it. I've got a meat thermometer. You buy this at HEB. If you wanna make sure if your thermometer is um, Calibrated, put it in ice water, and it should read 32 degrees, right? If it doesn't read 32 degrees, something's up. Conversely, if you put this into boiling water, it should read what? Tompkins. That was 212, you. depending 212. on your altitude. Now, in the, right? I've never taken the altitude okay. at 26,000 feet, which is the okay. top of Mount Everest, or 29,000 feet. I'd imagine it boils right? a little bit different there. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how I would tempt this really quickly. I'm going to show you all. I'm going to pull this out. Be careful. It's really hot. I'm going to take my thermometer and I'm literally going to put it directly into the center of that steak. And I don't know if y'all can see this. They're like, oh wait, I hit the wrong button. We're having a, oh, there we go. Come here, you. Let's see. So we're at 120. I'm going to let this guy go for another, let's say, five minutes in here. Five minutes. What I'm looking heard. for is an internal temperature of 130. I'm going to pull these steaks out at 130. Which let them rest. going toward the medium right? rare. Right, so we're starting at that medium rare. But after, the, after about 10 minutes, we're going to get some carryover cooking. And they're going to be a beautiful mid-rare, right, which is what I want. So back to our butter. In here, look, it comes with a lanyard. You can wear it around your neck. It'd be really cool. OK, so room temperature butter. We're gonna do, you can do chopped parsley right here, just like this. Y'all wanna see me chop some parsley? I do. You do? Okay, so what I do, I just took the leaves, it's nice and washed. And is that an Italian parsley, Chef? This is Italian flat leaf parsley, yes. Not its curly cousin? Not its curly cousin. I know that you like curly parsley a lot, right? For like Mediterranean. I, I do, I think it's, uh, I dislike it for whatever reason. We're gonna do the old. A little bitterness, I think both are good. Chop, chop, um, chop, chop, chop. Claire had a great comment earlier. Claire, uh, she said, I uh, would Claire. love to see some roasted garlic in there. And that's the great thing about this Claire. compound butter is this, I would say the maitre d hotel butter, sorry, the maitre d'hotel butter is the, uh, the, the godfather of all these like kind of compound butters and where they come from. But it is so easy to make uh, compound butters by taking exactly how Charlotte yep. has it. She's got the butter that's at room temperature and then adding anything you want to it and mixing it up. Right. And then refrigerating, allowing it to, and then adding it either to muffins or cakes. You could make, yep. you know, Orange zest and sugar and vanilla, and make a deli. I mean, you could make any a kind little of Dijon. combination. And I'm gonna do some lemon zest. The Dijon has enough acid in it that I don't feel like I need um, any of the lemon juice. But you can always add the lemon juice. And Claire, this is where I. This is where you put in that garlic, right? If you want that garlic, traditionally. Oh, you can leave the sticker, chef. I'll take the, the sticker. sticker on you there. want some I like sticker, the sticker in yours? In there. So traditionally. Um, 
steaks are served with like a Bernays sauce, right? Which is like that tarragon, like that buttery tarragon goodness. So we could definitely add some tarragon. We could add some chives. I mean, if um, you think about it, this has all the base. So if you're going to make a, a pan sauce for those steaks that you have, right? you could add your, you'd add your butter, you'd yes. add some herbs or whatever. So this is basically making it all in advance and, and then just adding it fresh to the top. Instead yes. Of it. I'm using salted butter. I know Tompkins doesn't like, um, doesn't like salted butter. You prefer like to, to have. to control the amount yes. of salt that goes into food. There's no doubt. All right. So mix all this up really well. You could even add a little olive oil in there if you wanted. And then I'm going to show you guys how to put it onto a piece of parchment and roll it. Now, I have like a life hack for you, a couple of them. We've got parsley already cut if you wanted to make it a little easier on yourself. But if Always. that's like, seriously, like if you're like, I know I need like next step life hack. We literally sell multiple versions of compound butters in the butter department. Already right? ready we to have go. like chili lime, jalapeno chipotle. We have lemon herb, like that would be amazing. Um, we have a black and white truffle. Like you could do all the different things. And also like as I'm saying this right now, I just thought about this. You could buy these and put these all over your turkey for Thanksgiving. Yep. Raise your hand if you want to see that class. Okay. So here is um, our piece of parchment. All I'm going to do is take our butter. And I'm going to slap it down there. And I need a. So I you're making it. your own package, right? I am. I'm making a little. I'm making a little package. I'm going to just do like this. Just like um, I do this with cookie dough, right? Like when you want to make cookie dough into a roll. I could eat that with a spoon right now. This I butter. Could you not? Yep. Oh. No shame. I mean, straight up, eat it. Right. Just like this. And then all I'm going to do is. Put that right there. All right. I'm going to take my parchment, fold it over, and bring it back. Can you see what I'm doing? Let me move this out of the way. I want you all to get a good visual. I'm pulling, pulling it back and just sort forming it into a nice log. Roll it up. Grab my knife. Cut off any excess that we don't need. Like this. And then we just twist it up on either side. We've got this nice little, it looks like a little piece of candy. We're gonna put this in the refrigerator and let it harden. And then we're gonna slice it up before, um, and put it on the steaks. So I'm gonna put this in the As fridge. As they rest. So if you're yes. just joining us, the French yes. Fries Reclash, Chef Charlotte has made, we got steaks in the oven. They got about, I got a timer set, 34 seconds. 34 seconds. They were seconds. at 120. We've got the palm frites that we're about to re-blanch. All right. We've some we're blanched. Uh, if you're watching us on Facebook, don't forget, you can click and buy the items as you're seeing them. You can click on the link. It'll take you right to it. You can buy them. Oh, man. Is, so, this, is, this, is it time now? Is this the time? This is. So we're, I'm getting ready to fry these fries. So these are some of our french fries that we have um, blanched. I put them on a, a towel to absorb any of that extra oil. But you can see how I can pinch them. And they, they're, they're like... A little They're bit soft, soft, right? This is what we're looking for. They don't have too much color on them, right? Perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these and we're going to put them into our oil. We're going to get them so crispy. So what you're going to need before you do this is um, something to take them out with. So either tongs or a spider, um, slotted spoon, and then a bowl to put them in, right? And then, of course, your seasoning. So I'm going to take these over here. Fries, man. So good. It's like my favorite thing in the world. Oh, Tompkins, I forgot to open your wine. That's okay. Yeah? Just super parched over here is all. No big deal. I know. I'll, just, I'll wait. All right, so we are at 375. Again, I'm going to do this in batches. So again, really slowly and carefully. Not like that. Whoa, I almost died. All right. Throw these guys in there. See how they're not bubbling as much? Oh, man, I broke it. I broke it. That's okay. We'll get, I'll get another one for you, Chef. It's, it's all right. That means we get new stuff. Okay. Putting that in there. So this is the second fry. This is our second fry. This, this is, is for where the we're going to get that all the crispy. crispy. This is for, like, this is for all the money right here. I love it. I'm going to do them in batches. Yes, we, had, right. we, have, we have questions on, uh, on some things. Like, when we go, we'll be able to rewatch this. Absolutely. Yes. All these videos, you can always go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash H-E-B. And you'll be able to see past episodes, this episode, um, and be able to kind of, you can cook it along with us. The great thing about once you watch these live and then you go back and rewatch them is you can literally pause at any point, stop, see it, there it is, youtube.com slash and just rewatch everything. It's also fun to fast forward or 
rewind things and catch us doing uh, funny poses. That's also kind of fun. All right. I'm going to tempt this guy again just so that we can see, right? Take it, and we're going to go just like this. Let's see. Where are we? Thank you. Jamie's on my side. See, she said, I would totally say the same thing if you didn't get your wine. She was waiting, she oh, waiting to get her Moscato okay. on. I was waiting for my appetizer, Jamie. It's no big deal. Look, I know well, these things Well, since we were doing French cooking, I picked out a really cool French wine. It's an exclusive to HEB, 17 bucks. I was excited about it. Let's see. So we're at 128. At? I'm good with 128 right here. I'm going to take these guys out. Cooking. Yep, because of carryover cookies. So I'm going to take this guy out. And, and that remember, cast iron pan is going to give you a little more because it's got, it'll retain the heat so well. And I'm going to let it sit. I'm going to move it over. I'm going to leave it right Claire there. Claire said, oh boy, come to mama. <laughs> oh boy, come to mama. I it made some butter so good, I'm not ahead of time. That is a, I mean, you gotta, we gotta hand it to our, our HEB meat market. If you, you gotta go in there. I mean, these guys are absolute heroes, what they do that they, they literally can get you anything. And the steaks that they had in the case on display that Charlotte grabbed is literally, we're visual creatures, right? We see something and we're like, holy cow, why would I not take that steak? That's a gigantic piece of meat that I'm going to do for the, for the class. And then for everybody else to see like, Hey, just go, go big. So that's a little butter you're going on right on top, right? Is there resting? Butter. Again, that's the maître du on top. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love to hear you say it. It's too fun for me. I'm gonna let these guys sit right over here. I'm gonna, is that a good spot for them? Sure. Sure. I mean, okay. I'm not cooking, so. Okay. <laughs> I just want you. people to see them, so you if can you look at them. If you don't burn yourself while you're while right. you're making, I'll, it's okay. I'll wait on the wine as well. We'll, we'll keep waiting. Jamie, we're just gonna wait. You it's okay. What? Don't worry about it. I've, I, I don't want to. We don't rush anything. I get it. You know, we're, I get it. Chateau Blagnon. Right? Okay, we're gonna open this because Tompkins wants this, and I'm I'm here for you, Tompkins. So this is a Bordeaux blend. So well, several I can't different grapes. I technically grapes. drink it on the air. I want to be able to at least talk so about it. So I just it. want you to know that I went to HEB <laughs> at eight o'clock this morning. I was picking out steaks, and I was like, I'm gonna get a wine, right, to go with this guy. So I went into the wine department, and the wine uh, manager was there, the wine steward was there, and I said, uh, I'm doing a French thing, and she was like, No problem, gotcha. And um, she said, well, how much do you want to spend? And at first it was like a $45 bottle. And then I said, nah, I'm looking for like, I'm looking for 60 or 16, 16 to, to 20 right here. Bordeaux blend, 17.98, exclusive to HEB. Ooh, ooh. That means you can't buy it anywhere else nope. but at HEB. So if you're Boop. looking for it somewhere else. We're going to let it breathe for just a moment. This is Merlot and Cab, so it is that Bordeaux style blend. Coming back to my fries, because this is really what it's all about, y'all. I made a steak, and I'm not really, I'm more excited about this. Look at these guys. Look. Are they getting crispy? Are they Look. getting that golden brown? Look. He's so crunchy. I'm so excited. I feel like that's important, right? You can't have, like, you, you got to get the crunchy fries because the fry is meant to be dipped in something or served along, so it can't be like a par-cooked. Listen. It needs, to be a, needs to be crispy, right? It's got to be like a like, handle. So think of it this way, right? So it's, it's perfectly hot, right? And it's crunchy on the outside and creamy and pillowy on the inside, and it's dusted with flakes of salt and then you dip it into ketchup, which is a perfect balance of sweet and, and sour. And it's like the, the stars aligned, ketchup and fries, right? Like <laughs> peanut butter and jelly, chocolate and peanut butter. You Kit know. Kats and Rolos. I mean, you know, it's anything, whatever it's you're It's just right? the most perfect combination. Oh. It does smell really good. It's like, uh, I love frying food at home because the next morning you wake up, it still smells like so, the fries you fried the night before. Right? Okay. So since we're talking about frying this at home, I want to talk about what we would do with the oil, right? So you can, you, this oil isn't done. You're not done with it. You can definitely let it completely cool to room temperature, strain it through a coffee filter or a fine mesh sieve, and you can put it back in, like into a resealable container or back into the jug that it came in. You want to reseal it super tight because um, oxygen is the um, enemy of oil and, and light. And then you just want to, um, and you can use it again. You'll know when it's bad because it'll have an off, off aroma. Look at how, look, these guys are, oh, this is gonna be so good, y'all. 
crispy. Crispy. I'm going to do the rest of them. Sound so in the pan. I always season my fries while they're right out of the fryer. Always while they're hot. Right. Oil always sticks while they're down. hot so that it sticks. That oh way God. they be, the do two become that? one. Crunchy. Okay, I'm going to add these guys in here. The rest of your fries. Yep. So the second fry, we're at about 350, right? Yep. On that point, frying them up. You can see the you can see the reason why she dried them off because obviously you're not getting a ton of those like bubbles going crazy permeating no. the surface. You're getting just enough of that the actual moisture from the potato themselves. Don't forget this guy. Let's see. Coming back over here. I already seasoned a little salt and pepper. Y'all want pepper on those? What is something that you like can't stand on French fries or something that you love? Are you a seasoned fry? I feel fry? like I've already said it, mayonnaise. Don't serve me mayonnaise. Don't, okay. I told you you're going to make How it How do you feel about me. seasoned fries? I'm okay with seasoned fries. Yeah. I'm, right. I'm good with it. I know you're not. Uh, can I ask this question? Charlotte, what about truffle fries? You a fan of truffle fries? You do truffle fries? I'm, we're go, mm -hmm. we're going to a restaurant. We're, I'm going to order the big thing. I'm ordering the biggest basket of truffle fries. And Charlotte Sam is going to eat it, yes or no? I'm sorry, what? Truffle, truffle fries? fries? Sure. A, I mean, sure. I feel like that's a good, you know, people love You know what, fries. Tompkins? I, truffle, it, so, it's a... Personal preference? It's like perfume. Too okay. much. Like, if I could smell it coming, no way, man. Just got, it's too much. But, like, if I walk past you, I'm like, oh, truffle, right? Lightly scented. It, right? It's, got, it's like perfume or cologne. All right, I'm going to look. Do you see how that butter's melting on was there? Was that a I'm dig at my cologne, chef? Is that what that was? Dig a little dig at my cologne? I get it. Less is more. Uh, we haven't let these sit long enough, so I'm just going to give it a couple more minutes. You can see that butter's melting beautifully oh, over so the top. Oh, it's going to be so good. Patience. Like, just wait for it, I promise. And our fries are doing really well. I wish I had one more thing to do. Uh, I can do a dance. Pour me a glass of wine like that, like pouring a glass. Okay. Just to hear, you know what I want to hear? I want to hear Rob picking up the sound of the click, 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 click. Like, that's the best sound in the world to me. This sound right here. Yes, that sound. It's like click, 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 click. It's such a good sound. Whoa, that's, whoa, whoa, whoa. What are we doing here? That's oh. a ton. Oh, I just thought in the style of, since we're te te Texas, right? I gotta be able to swirl it. You know what I mean? I gotta be able to, right, what, are you, what are you picking Ooh. up? What is this gonna taste like for me? Oh my God. Honestly, I'm like, mm, cherry. There's like some, some like dark dried cherries in there. All right. So Bordeaux, what are the five great varietals you said that are in Bordeaux again? So like typically it's, Bordeaux? and I, you know, I, I could be wrong and I know that there's some others, but typically it's Cab Franc, Cabernet, Malbec, Mouvet, M, there's an M in there. Malbec? Oh gosh. Malbec. Um, Merlot. Me Hold on. Oh. Car Carmenere? Oh, Carmenere, yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, Esmeralda says she's making mahi mahi fish tacos right now, but you really make me want steaks now. I like mahi mahi fish tacos. What did you season your mahi mahi with? Esmeralda, let us know what you season them with. Esmeralda, you're always welcome here. We'll we'll save you a cut of meat. Corn or flour? Ooh, fish tacos. I feel like you got to go corn. I don't know. It can I'm, go I'm, either I'm, way. Yeah, maybe. Look, I'm just doing. I just want to get the, these fries. Are going to be West so Coast. good in my mouth. Like, have you ever had aioli on fries? Yeah, I, yes, aioli, as long as it's not plain aioli mayonnaise, I'm not gonna hate the aioli. Aioli is mayonnaise. <laughs> aioli is really yes. French, fancy French mayonnaise with garlic it's, and it's olive still, oil. It's mayonnaise, <laughs> it's still mayonnaise. All right. I'm gonna get these guys out of here. And we're all, we're, I mean like, we're almost done. This is it, we're almost done. We actually made, if you go back and look at our YouTube channel, we have made an aioli. I know we've made a couple different, we may have only made one aioli. We've got a couple different ones on our website. If you ever want to go to the website, go to hb.com slash recipes. You can check out some of the great oh aiolis we've made. But aioli is a great thing to add to french fries for sure. Throw these guys in I'm there. I'm not hating on all mayonnaise-based products. They said curry mayo. I'm down for curry mayo. Curry mayo, just, curry ketchup is a plain thing. plain old craft or something kind of mayonnaise, I'm not doing it. Yeah. You just don't want a big like dollop of Hellman's. I'm gonna put some more, a little bit of this. So good. All right. Those are hot. I'm gonna put this. Thank you, big wings. I feel that. I feel that. Plain mayo is black. It's meh. All right. We wanna also uh, drop us in the chat if you've seen the past uh, eight, almost nine months now. We've been doing these classes. Is there anything that stuck out? Any class that's been your favorite? Anything that you've learned that you've taken back? 
We'd love to hear from you. We'd love for you to post it and tag HEB in it if you've made the, one of the meals yeah. that you watched one of us cook. We'd love to know uh, what you're loving, what's, what's, or maybe something that's turned into a staple, like if you were like, yeah. I've never cooked this, but now my family loves it, we did it. Right. Let us know. Okay, so We'd love I'll to hear look at this. what's working for you. So we've let it rest. Our juices are redistributing. We've gotten a little bit of like carryover cooking. It's, you know, cool. Like, I like to have a steak slice. Do y'all want to see me slice this? I want to slice it. Do y'all want to, how do y'all, do y'all want to do this one? Or do y'all want to do this one? The front one? Okay. This also, right here? Go oh, ahead, Tom. Sorry. sorry. I, was gonna I, say, I didn't no, mean before, to interrupt before, you, before, sir. No. <laughs> Before you do that, we also want to let them know as we're doing it, because this is a very big moment right here. This is a, this is we're on the precipice, chef. I know the precipice. The, I really hope like <laughs> I was giving it a second left to rest because we also want to know in oh. the chat. It's good for us to know what classes would you like to see. We kind of you know have things that we're doing in advance. We got to work in advance, but if you would love to see a class or something you want to learn how to make, drop in the chat and we'll figure out a way to figure out how to get you that information. Figure out how to do it for you and show you how to make it. All right, now. Do y'all feel like he did that on purpose? The cutting it's all of the... about you, Tom. Oh, hold on one second. Let me just run to the restroom. Okay, yeah. Pause okay. for a second. All right. Anything else? I'm no. good. I'm right. ready, chef. We're going to do this front one, and we're going to give this guy... This part right here is my absolute fave. I'm going to just... That's, that's just for, that's for me. A little cap is for eat you. That little, that little cap guy. That's well-deserved. Well-deserved. It is. That is a prime... What you're seeing right now, prime... New York Strip, H-E-B Meat Market. Do, do, do. Cutting up a steak, never a bad thing. You can see how the butter's kind of melted over the top. I feel like I should give like golf commentary. Oh, As please. You see, we're dicing the meat very slowly. And the last piece is, that's it, it's cut, that's perfect. The butter slowly dripping over the top. So we'll just take this Right, Claire? Guy. She said, I love that each piece gets butter. That's exactly right. As it's melting, we took that compound butter. You could take it out of the fridge. It could be there for six months. It'll last a good long time. Ooh. Pop it over the top. Same thing, Maria. Prime rib for the holidays. Just drop that butter over the top Ooh. of the rested hot steak. Let it ooze over the top. Ooze over the top. I would definitely pour those drippings right over the top. This guy is perfect. Oh, spilled. And this is it. Like, this is it. We're done. I love it. I'm so happy right now. We are done. We're at a pretty good medium. We're a little, we're at a medium, which is totally I'd fine. I'd say you're there. I'm not I'd mad say about you're... it, right? And it's like, A glass of wine. And that's it. We do me a done. favor just so I feel that we can complete this whole, we just swirl that wine for me one more time. Well, you want me just to swirl it? Swirl the wine. I want to, I want to. Like, you want like a, like a this swirl? I'm like virtually a, feeling this whole thing. You want like thing. a this? Because I want to take a swig. This is the way I do it. I take a swig of the wine and then a piece, and the piece of the steak and then a swig of the wine. Absolutely beautiful. Um, super easy. Steak frites, brasserie style cooking, beautiful glass of wine. Have some great fundamentals that you guys can walk away with. The science of how to fry a french fry. Um, if you missed anything or want to watch this again, you can always go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash H-E-B, watch right. this at other classes. You can see Tompkins do some really cool stuff. Um, Join us you, every week, yeah. right? Uh, H-E-B.com slash classes. What are they going to watch next week? So next week we are going to do um, some back to school recipes. So some easy back to school recipes. Because literally we're it's back to just school. weeks away from back to school, which is crazy. So you can always sign up for Fortune Classes. Chef, thank you so much. If you're watching on Facebook, don't forget you can always sign up for these classes. Go to our website, H-E-B.com slash classes. Sign up. Merci beaucoup. Thanks for watching. Charlotte, you're the best. You're the best, Scott Tom Goods, and so are you guys. Thanks a lot. See you later. Bye.